Welcome back to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous My Two Cents. In today's video, we're going to go over everything I know about docking 1.0 in version 13.3. Twenty twenty one is beginning to turn into a banner year for Star Citizen. So many different elements of the game are coming together. We have Orison coming into the game before the end of the year and possibly Pyro, and now we know for sure that Nyx is also under development. So we're not gonna be just constrained to one system for the rest of the time we play this game. We're gonna have at least three. Nonetheless, docking is an element that's been holding back gameplay for quite a bit. And holding back gameplay in ships like the Constellation, the 890 Jump, the Javelin. Oh, we don't have those yet, do we? Well, we definitely have the Carrick, and all those have parasitic ships that land and take off from inside them. And docking is the element that's been missing. In version 1.0 of docking, you can dock ships like the Archimedes and the Merlin to the back of any of the currently flown constellations. We're going to take a look at that today as we're running through one of my least favorite places in Star Citizen, Lorville. And I'm going to say this, if it wasn't a good place, I wouldn't be here. I love Lorville. It shows me what the world could be if we do nothing about anything. Now, I played with docking for a little bit over the last two days, just to try to get the gist of what the best way to do this video was. Now I know there's a lot of people that go out and say, how to dock, watch my video. I've been around Star Citizen for quite some time. And I know that if I put how to on a video right now, six weeks from now, six days from now, six months from now, that how to video is still gonna be up there. And it's absolutely not going to be the way to dock, and you're just going to wind up confusing people. But currently, docking works similarly to landing on any one of the landing pads that we could land on in the game. And that's not a bad thing. But there is a manual element to it which is kind of wonky. And when I mean wonky, it takes a very, very, very light touch, which there really isn't inside of the game right now. We still have overpowered thrusters and we don't have real true to life physics unless you do things like turn off the FCS. So the fact that we're always flying with, I, I guess you could call it fly by wire, it makes things just a little bit difficult. When you stop turning, the ship stops turning immediately. When you stop going forward, it stops going forward immediately. The docking element manually is just something that I feel might be done uncoupled with very, very fine movements in the future. But right now, I just didn't find it very useful at all. So we're going to get into our Merlin, and this is the first thing that you want to do. Now, I do suggest that you do this with somebody else. I'm flying at a time when there's not a lot of people on, so I don't have to worry about being griefed or being attacked or, you know, the things that may happen don't always happen when you're playing during prime time or free fly week. So getting into your Merlin you want to turn it on. Now, I, I had a couple of problems here not realizing it was coming on. I generally use keystrokes to turn my ships on and off, even though I have the Thrustmaster HOTUS system with the TPR rudder pedals. So I have a lot of buttons that I could use to actually do this. But I use the U key to turn on all systems, and I use the I key to turn on the engines. Though I think the U key might be flight ready. So that might have been one of my issues here. But once I get the ship up and running, it's a tap of the N key, which launches you out of the bottom of the spaceship. 
So I'm sitting over here playing with these things, just trying to get my get my feel of this ship because I've never flown a Merlin or an Archimedes, which is what I'm in right now, out of the back of my constellation before. So I get the ship ready to go and we're gone. Look at that. So I make sure that I don't push forward on the throttle until I've dropped below the ship enough so I don't hit it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly out a couple of thousand meters and then turn around and come back towards the ship. Now, this was just to give myself enough distance to practice coming into it if that's what I was doing after jumping into the Merlin to protect the Constellation's rear quarters during a fight. I think that the addition of docking and the addition of being able to use the Merlin in game coming out of the back of the Constellation is going to make that ship, that tandem, that duo much more useful in the future. I'm very happy about this so far. But this first docking that I'm going to go through, it's going to show you the it's going to show you how I was doing it in the beginning. Now, if you're going to do this on your own, do not turn the ship off. Leave the engines on. It's important because Newtonian physics an object in motion remains in motion until acted upon by, right? You know. So if you don't have your engines on in the Constellation when you're trying to dock, you might knock it and put it into a spin that's going to make you docking much, much, much more difficult, if not impossible. So you want to approach the ship. You have two speeds that are going to appear underneath the marker for your target. Now, to initiate the docking sequence, you first want to have the ship you're docking with targeted. So just tap the T key while pointing at it, and you'll get it targeted. Now, you don't hit the end key too far ahead, or it will just say, um, docking requested, docking denied, and it's going to put your landing gear down, and then it's going to say docking requested, docking denied, when you do it again, and put your landing gear up. So it's going to sound like you're doing nothing. What you want to do is approach the rear of the constellation, make sure that your closure rate, which is the speed in parentheses, or I should say velocity, and you want to make sure that's kind of low because you are in space and hitting things at like 30 meters a second is probably a deadly hit. So this is me trying to play Kerbal Space Program. And I say that because I played Kerbal Space Program for 12, 13, 14, 14 years at this point. I love the game. It's amazing. And docking in the beginning was ridiculously hard until you realized that all you had to do is go and jump from one ship to the other, turn on both autopilots, have them point their docking ports near each other, jump back into the ship that you're trying to dock to it, and then just move forward really slow. That was a great fix. And I also want you to think to our times today. How does a Dragon capsule, whether it's crewed or cargo, dock with the International Space Station. It's done by computers. It's done by high, you know, this wonderful radar system that they have that moves the spacecraft right to the docking port, makes the capture, and locks it in place. And here I am trying to play KSP 1.0 or 0.0.0.5 and trying to dock with the ship, and it just doesn't work. I am sure that this part is something I was doing wrong, and I am sure that this part is something that will be improved over time. But I do want to ask you all this. How important is it that you dock manually? I personally don't think it's that it's important at all. I think that it's something that will be for a few people and I think that the more realistic approach to this, the safer approach to this, is holding that en down that end key and letting the ship do the docking for you, letting that docking computer, letting your computer do it for you. 
And I didn't learn my lesson. I played with this for quite some time, and it just didn't work. So I'm jumping ahead and playing through a scenario in my head here, and you're doing bounty hunting with a friend. And in this scenario, I'm not going to have anybody flying the ship. We're just going to pretend that was happening. So you might want to have three friends with you, so four people total. Pilot, two turret gunners, and then one Merlin slash Archimedes pilot, depending on the ship that you want to fly. So if you were the Merlin pilot, you would run back here and attempt to get into the ship really fast, which currently is almost impossible. But you jump in the ship, and you turn it on, hit that end key, and launch. Now the idea here is for the Merlin pilot to go out and break up whatever squadrons of ships would be coming in. That way they spread apart and they are put into a kind of a furball, right? Kind of a dogfight readily, which hopefully makes it easier for the gunners and the pilot to defend the constellation. But in this situation, it was just a basic bounty hunter mission. In fact, I think this was one of the certification missions. So it was going to be one where I was just going to run out. I was going to engage whatever ship they throw at me, which I think was a Mustang, destroy it, and then get back home. And fortunately for me, the Archimedes is fitted with four laser repeaters, and we made short work of the attacking spacecraft. So we turn ourselves back towards the ship. We're going to fly out there, do a funky flip maneuver, kind of like Starship, and then come back in and land right in the back end of the Constellation. So now that I told you what was going to happen, let's get to it. Here's that funky flip maneuver that I do, flying right over the bottom of the spacecraft. I flip it, and then I just start approaching the rear end of the ship, make sure it's targeted, hit the N key, and then hold down the N, and there it is. A and all I have to say is, this makes it all different. This has improved my gameplay, has improved my experience flying the Constellation, and I can't wait to get some of my friends inside of it with me, run some bounty hunting, hunter missions, and see what we can get done. Folks, Docking 1.0, I'm really impressed by it. I think that it's come a long way from what I thought it was going to be. And I finally have a ship docked to the back of my Constellation that's not just there as eye candy something that I could use, something that one of my friends could use, and something that we can call an asset once and for all. Now back at base, I thought I would talk a little bit about docking 2.0. In the second iteration of docking, we're going to be able to dock larger ships to the docking ports on the space stations, or to each other. At this point, I do not believe it's implemented in the game because there's no way to get the ships that would use that method, the Carrick and, of course, the 890 Jump or the Hammerhead to spawn on a docking port. I can't wait for that to happen. But I figured I'd talk about it a little bit and say I'm looking forward to this. I like the fact that the camera system lets you look right out the docking port to make it easier to dock as it would in something like real life docking to the ISS. Now, I'm excited for this to come in because I fly my Carrick often, although covertly, and I am looking forward to being able to dock it next to another Carrick or have other ships dock to it. Docking is changing the way that we are looking at this game. And it is just one of those missing elements that are finally here that are just showing us that the game is being worked on, that the game is being tuned. And I can't wait to see what else 2021 has to offer us all. Now, Fleet Week will be coming in May of 2021, so just a few weeks away. And I'm going to say this right now. 
If you're one of those people that buy ships when they put them on sale, start saving now. Because there will be a ship on sale for Fleet Week. I don't know what it is, and I don't even know if it's going to be flyable. But I know that something's coming. And this isn't a shock. I know that it's been rumored. It could be the 400i. It could be something totally different. I would expect something alien. Or it could be, I don't know, maybe something from Crusader, right? But what I'm thinking is that it's going to be a military ship, and we still need to have Xion Bomber. We need the Xion Transport. We need another Traveran ship, possibly, or maybe, just maybe, they throw us a bone and give us something like a Van Duel bomber. I don't know, but I expect it to be something like Traveran or Xian and something military. It's a guess, my best guess. I have no inside knowledge on this whatsoever. I wish I did, because I would know whether I want to buy my new iMac or save the money for a ship. Well, I guess I'm going with the new iMac because these videos are important to me. And now that I have my studio done and I'll be streaming and I'm back, I'm happy again. All right. Thank you for joining me today. I'm just going to let this play out. We're going to go wherever we go. But I am looking forward to delivering as many of these videos as I can over the next few weeks. My next one will be on the reputation system, which goes all the way back to 3.12, I believe. But I've been finding it pretty fun to play with. Oh, maybe it goes to 3.13, but 3.13 was in the PTU so long, it feels like it was out a lot sooner. We'll figure it out, but we'll go over all of that, and I'll talk about the reputation system, which definitely adds a lot into the game and gives you something to do if you like the grind. Now, there is something new that you actually see when you log into the game, talking about how Alpha UEC is Alpha UEC, and that they can reset at any point that they want, that the ships, the equipment, the hardware, the everything that you buy can be lost and reset and start over if they deem it necessary for a new build or because they find that too many people are using exploits. I don't want that to make you all not play the game, but just think about that. Don't take things too seriously. We're all alpha testing this game. The more we do it, the better the game gets and make sure to keep putting in those bug reports when you encounter bugs. All right, folks, if you like the video, please click the thumbs up button down below. If you're a subscriber and haven't done so already, make sure to click on that notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.